Okay, hi there, welcome to the second of a little suite of videos looking at an introduction to markets. Uh, we're trying to understand a little bit about supply and demand, in this case, in the market for strawberries. In the first video, we had eight factors that could impact on the market and cause the price to go up or down. In this video, we're just going to take a little bit more of a detailed look at some of the key factors affecting supply and demand in the market. We call these, some of these factors, we call them conditions of demand and supply. So first of all, the key factors impacting on the market demand for, for strawberries uh, in the countries such as the UK, for example. Obviously, a key factor will be, for consumers, the price of strawberries. Uh, the price of strawberries uh, will be a factor affecting movements up and down the demand curve, which we'll come to in the next video. Uh, we'll think about the price of complements to strawberries, uh, the price of substitutes for strawberries, the level of consumer income, the effects of changing tastes and preferences, and also possibly speculative demand. So in terms of price of strawberries, well, typically when strawberries become uh, cheaper, if the supermarkets, for example, are discounting the price of a kilo of strawberries, a lower price leads to an expansion of demand because consumers think they can get more satisfaction per pound spent and there's clearly a financial incentive to buy more. So a price going down leads to an expansion of demand. If the price goes up, that leads to a contraction of demand. We'll look at the demand curve in the next video. Another key factor affecting the market for strawberries is the price of complements to strawberries. So, for example, if the price of whipped cream goes up, uh, whipped cream is probably seen by most people as a complement to strawberries. In other words, things that you tend to buy together. So if whipped cream becomes more expensive, then people will probably buy less whipped cream and possibly then also buy uh, a bit of fall in demand for strawberries. Keteris, Powerbus, all other factors held constant. So if the price of a complement goes up, the demand for the strawberries goes down and vice, vice versa. Uh, what about substitutes for strawberries? Well, for example, let's, uh, let's talk about if price of raspberry, raspberries goes up, uh, perhaps the price of raspberry jam goes up, for example. That could lead to people switching away from raspberry jam and perhaps shifting, switching their demand to strawberry jam. So if raspberries are substitutes for strawberries, they may be, although there may not be a close relationship. I think we can probably call them substitutes. If the price of raspberries goes up, then there will be a substitution effect. Some people, some consumers will tend to switch their demand away from raspberries towards strawberries. So we call that the substitution effect. Clearly, your incomes, your budget, uh, your purchasing power is going to have an effect on demand. And normally we'd say that as income goes up, as people become perhaps better off, uh, we would expect demand for strawberries to go up too. There should be a positive relationship uh, between income and demand. We call that relationship an income effect. As people's incomes go up, they should in theory be able to buy more of something um, for a normal good fresh strawberries for example as incomes go up people will probably buy more it may be the case for example that people on relatively low incomes if their income goes up they can afford to switch from maybe frozen products towards fresh fresh products there uh, clearly in a market <laughs> uh, demand is always sensitive a little bit to changing tastes and preferences so advertising and marketing for example promoting strawberries as part of a healthy eating campaign can have an effect on people's tastes and preferences. Good, effective, subtle marketing by farmers, for example, can lift total demand, perhaps by informing consumers about the benefits of consumption. Now, in some markets, not necessarily with strawberries, but in some sectors, there is actually a speculative demand for certain commodities. Uh, people buying, in this case, strawberries, in the expectation that the price will go up in the future. I think with strawberries, it's probably unlikely. Uh, strawberries, by their nature, are perishable. There's no real futures market in strawberries. But these factors uh, were applying to this particular market. You can apply these factors to any industry, any market. Price of the product itself, price of complements, substitutes, people's incomes, tastes and preferences, and perhaps speculative demand. Now, that's on the demand side. What about the supply side? I'm just going to take you through seven factors that could impact on the supply to the market. The supply from growers, for example, that, that eventually finds its way to retail level. One is the price of strawberries itself. Two, cost of production. 
Three, the price of crops in competitive supply. We'll explain that in a second. Weather conditions, uh, climate and things, the number of producers in the market, the scale of production also matters, and the government can impact on strawberry supply uh, by through, for example, subsidies and taxation. Let's go through them. So, for example, the price of strawberries. Well, typically, uh, if you believe in the profit motive, when strawberry prices go up, there's a greater incentive, commercial incentive for farmers perhaps to expand their supply uh, in the next growing period. So if, when strawberry prices are pretty high, perhaps farmers will bring some more fields under cultivation to try and increase their harvest in future time periods. A lot, of course, depends not just on the existing price for strawberries, but also the expected price going forward. The costs of production are key supply side factors. And typically we say that when the costs of production go up, supply at a given price level goes down. So, for example, if labour costs become more expensive, a minimum wage perhaps goes up, or if the cost of fertiliser increases, or the cost of maintaining and buying polytunnels, uh, ground sheets and things to protect against um, pests, if those costs go up, that leads to a fall in supply at each price. Uh, that the, the yield, the, 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 the actual crop itself, may be independent of price. Strawberries don't know what the price of strawberries is. But the ability of producers to sell to the market at a given price will go down if costs go up. The third point is quite a tricky one, and we do have a separate video on competitive supply. So check that one out. It's a recent video on the Tutor Due YouTube channel. You see, farmers can grow a variety of crops. They, there's an opportunity cost of growing one crop. You sacrifice the ability to grow another. So given that farmers can grow a variety of crops, for example, if strawberry prices go down for a year or two, some farmers may say, well, actually, you know what? We think this is a persistent change in price. We're not getting the right price for our products. Our profits are down. We may well switch out of strawberries into something else, blueberries, wheat, etc. So typically... When the price of alternative products is low, for example, blueberries or wheat, more strawberries will be grown because farmers perhaps see a better profit to be made. Weather, climate, clearly must have an impact on yield. The yield is, for example, the, the, the tons of strawberries per hectare. That will be a measure of yield. So when, the, when there's drought or heavy rain, that's going to lead to falling crop yields. The supply goes down. Equally, when the sun is shining and you get sufficient rain, and sunshine, the crop's going to be maybe 10, 15, 20% above forecast. So clearly weather conditions play a key part in shaping supply. So too, the number of producers. So for example, if we have new firms entering the market, growing strawberries in this case, the entry of new producers, other things remaining the same, or Ceteris paribus, that will lead to increased market supply at each price. And crucially linked to that, I mean, linking five and six together, the scale of production has an effect on supply. So if you're getting, for example, the emergence of investment in big scale strawberry farming, industrial farming, as opposed to relatively small holders, large scale production leads to lower costs of supply per unit, per, per ton or per kilo, and therefore can increase supply. Finally, the government, the government, can have quite a big effect on supply. Uh, all kinds of ways. I, I could have mentioned regulation, for example, or they could have minimum prices for products. But two, two examples here. If the government was to offer a subsidy to strawberry growers, uh, maybe subsidising the cost of their fertiliser or subsidising the cost of uh, polytunnels, for example, a subsidy lowers their costs and therefore you can supply more to the market for a given price. On the other hand, a tax, a tax on farmers increases costs. So, for example, if the government brings in a carbon tax and that affects farming, or the government brings in a, a tax on fertilisers, for example, uh, on environmental grounds perhaps, those taxes are taxes on the supplier, taxes increase cost, and other factors remaining the same, higher cost means less, a decreased supply, at each price. Now again, all of these factors can be replicated in different markets. We're just using strawberries as our introductory example. 
in our third video in the series, we're going to introduce you to the concept of demand and supply curves. Okay, thank you very much indeed.